And now here's my shoe that we're going to be doing the tutorial on. I haven't quite added all the decorations that I want to. For Halloween, this is the bat shoe. We have a bat as our toe front. And for fun, we have a bat in the back. And it'll be my pleasure to show you how this was put together and made. I hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Bobby from Bobby's Baking Blog. And since I've had a lot of requests for my uh, Purple Passion Fondant heel, I decided that I would go ahead and show you how to do a platform heel. I realize that's not purple. It's red. It's Fondorific Red Fondant. Um, if I'm going to use, like, the purple, I made myself the color, not the fondant. But if I'm going to use red or black, I'd rather buy it already made since it takes so much color to get that, that intensity. It's easier for me to do it this way. So you're going to start with a nice round ball with no creases, nice and even. And then all you want to do is add pressure to the bottom part of your ball and roll a nice cone. And sometimes I'll bring my fingers down like this just to give my heel the look that I want. I realize that it's going to not stay as I am rolling, but it gives my visual sight a way of knowing where I'm trying to get to. And I want my heel to be fairly thin. So I'm going to go longer than what I actually need this to be with, with just my fingers. And sometimes with the Fonderific, um, it will get a little bit shiny, and you don't always have time to let it rest. I have cornstarch sticking by, and I'll just rub that in. If you like the feel of icing sugar, it's just a personal preference. The other thing that you need is Tylos. We carry that in our store. You're going to want about a tablespoon for the heel just to give the fondant a little bit more structure. You could do a 50-50 with fondant and gum paste, but I find I don't have enough time to do what I need to do. And the Fondorific is so wonderful, and having unlimited time, even with the Tylos, um, I'd rather do that. Now, I will tell you that I have found with the Fondorific, because it does have such limited time, that sometimes I'll make my ball and let it sit for maybe an hour before I go and actually do this the heel just to give it a little bit more structure and a little bit more stability because it's still a little bit wobbly as you can see. But I have a trick for that and I can show you that too. I'm going to take this to 13 centimeters which is about 5 inches. It's easier for me to measure in centimeters because it's a little bit more exact. So I'm going to make a mark at 13 and that's a little bit more than 13 but I'm going to take my bobbleless top a little bit of that off. So I'm going to take that move it to the side to reshape it a little bit, bring it down. Now remember a heel kind of has that square top, it's not completely round, although I have been seeing some very odd shaped heels. And then I'm just going to take this and cut it. This is a tissue blade, it's made by Kemper. We will be carrying that in about a week or two. It's actually used for polymer clay, but it works perfectly for fondant. Fondant and polymer clay are so uh, similar in the way that they work, that a lot of the tools will work for them. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is personal, some people don't care. I like to get that nice heel effect that's going to attach. So I found if I can just put my smoother at an angle and bring it up, and then go back in and kind of shape that beautiful round heel part that you get at the top there. On the Purple Passion, I realized a little bit late that I didn't have that and I added it in later, which we might end up doing with this, I don't know. Usually that's something I have to check at the end. Alright, so I'm going to remeasure this since I did play with it. And I am a little bit over. If you're too high, sometimes your heel will stand too straight up and it won't look natural. Now you can go as thin as you want down here. You can go 
even thinner than this. But remember, we're going to get this skewer in here. So I wouldn't go much thinner than that skewer, and it is hard to do. I have problems with it myself sometimes. So what I like to do, because we are working with Fonderific, and it still is a little bit wobbly, as you can see, I'm going to put this in the freezer for about six minutes, come out, and skewer it, and then shape it. Welcome back. We have taken our heel out of the freezer, and I went ahead and skewered it. As you can see, it's going through the bottom part of the heel and upward. And the best way I can tell you to do that is you want to twist and push and pull out, twist and push and pull out. Uh, this one's in actually really good. I can't get it to move at all, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. You might um, end up uh, disfiguring it just a little bit when you twist and pull from the freezer, but you can fix that, and I'm going to show you how. The other thing I was going to show you is um, I just went ahead and skewered my toe tap with the tissue blade, and I did. you can go ahead and add a toe tap, a black toe tap in, or a tan toe tap in. I think it's just going to look even and a little bit more natural if I paint over this rather than trying to get one to fit exactly perfectly. So that's uh, why I did what I did. When you go to smooth out your heel, you're just going to use normal fondant smoothers that you would for a cake. You want the straight side facing towards the narrow end of your heel. And you're going to lean one side up as you use the other. Your, like I'm leaning my left side up and I'm using my right side just to even that out. And then do the same thing on this side. And that should take out any prints that you have and give you back that shape that you want. You can also go down because heels are not, like I said, just completely round. So what we have left is to put our little wooden piece that is on a heel back here. And then we need to let this actually rest for 24 hours to give it the structure to hold the, um, the shoe. I did want to show you real quick before we move on that this is another type of heel. And it was made with the cake structure mold. Uh, and you can get this at cakestructure.com. The only reason that I didn't start off with using this mold it is faster and of course it's going to save you time. Not everybody has it. When I first started making shoes I did not have the mold so I had to come up with inventive ways to make it look like a heel. But this is available on the market. I would suggest whether or not you want to spend the investment um, depending on how many heels you think you might do in getting this drying ramp because you're going to lay your sole on here your heel is going to attach to the back. It's going to give it a little bit more structure. So that I would definitely invest in getting. Unless you know how to cut styrofoam yourself. Alright, so what we have left, like I said, and it would be on either one of these, is there's a little strip in the back of a heel. It's a generally tan, so that's the color that we're going to use. And it just is going to be attached to this area right here. In order to do that, you will need a piece of fondant that is either an off-white, an antique white, beige. You could add a little bit of brown if you wanted to, a little bit more of that look that's on shoes that wouldn't look. And you're going to want to add Tylos to it because as you can see, my gum paste still is very pliable which is wonderful for uh, eating and covering a cake and all that and the fashion part of the shoe that we're going to do when we do the, the toe and the heel it's not so good when we need structure so what I'm going to do is add some Tylos I'm going to add some Tylos in there. And on this, you don't need a tablespoon. You probably need, I would start with, it's like I'm almost empty. It's a good thing I have another one. 
As long as we're talking about the Tylos, I want to tell you there's many Tyloses on the market, CM, CMCs. Um, I particularly like this brand because it's white. I tried a brand that I love for other things, and it did change the color of the fondant because it had kind of a, I don't know, a grayish tone to it, I guess you would call. So you do want to to stick with a very white Tylos for this so you can keep your colors as true as possible. And I can feel that my fondant is changing, but it's not changing enough. It's still fairly limber. So I'm going to add some more. I'll just open up another one. And you're looking for a almost of a 50-50 that you would get with like a gum paste fondant mixture. And you can use, like I said, gum paste. You can do your own 50-50. You don't have to use the Tylos. I like the Tylos because sometimes gum paste will dry up too fast and you'll get cracks. And this way I know I won't. So I can feel it feels pretty good. Alright, this is a odd little trick that I kind of came up with and I'm going to move my mat out of the way to show it to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this and this is probably too big of a piece but that's alright. I'm going to roll this out a little bit. Let's see, I've got a little bit of red in there. If I hadn't mentioned before, red is one of those colors like black you're going to want to wash your hands in between, especially when we go and we do the two-tone colors for the toe piece and the heel piece. So I'm going to put this in a pasta machine, bring it down to a number one. Normally on these I use zero, but for this piece we just need a little number one. I'm just making an impression and for the front part of my heel. This heel's a little bit, the other heel's going to be done differently than this one. So I'm going to go in with my mini pizza wheel. I prefer the pizza wheel more than I would an X-Acto blade. Although you will be needing an X-Acto blade later because I get less dragging and I seem to have better control over the pizza blade. So I am just cutting this out. And like I said, all I did was turn that mold upside down to get this impression. It's going to be a little bit longer than I want because you obviously are not going to want that piece to go over your toe tap piece. But we can cut that with some fine scissors when we get there. So I'm just going to see. Looks like it might be just a little bit too wide. So I'm going to have to go in shave it up a little bit when I do. So I'm just gonna just kind of make it fit and mark without hurting my heel where I think I need to go in. And this very very top part you aren't you are not excuse me, going to need, so if it doesn't come out, don't worry about it. If it ends up fitting, don't worry about it. Either way, it's not going to be seen because that's the part of the heel that's going to attach to the back of your shoe. So I have my piece ready, and I'm, I made my own um, edible glue with some Tylos powder, some water, and a little bit of sugar. And I'll give that recipe on the blog and then you let it sit overnight till it gets nice and thick. You don't want too much, just enough. So it sticks. Okay. I want to make sure that this 
is lined up to where the toe tap's going to be. And then I'll come in right here, even it up, and gently lay it down. And that's all there is to this. You're going to want this to rest for 24 hours to give it stability. So I will see you in the next lesson. Okay, so we have finished our heel. I ended up making this kind of contraption because I wanted more of an incline for my heel. And it's just a piece of foam that I cut and pinned down. We're going to make the inset for the shoe. Um, so if you remember correctly from B, from the beginning. And on this one, I will be using for this inside part an X-Acto blade. But let me just cut out this little fish looking thing. And if you've ever seen any of my shoes, this is my little signature piece for the inside of my shoes. I like this little decorative piece. We recently have um, made more, excuse me, more templates available on Bobby's blog for different size shoes. So if you're going to do a nice high heel and you want a bigger platform, we have that there. Okay. Let's make it some of this. Whoa. Long pendant. And then we'll be cleaning this up. As you can see, the Tylos has made the fondant quite hard. It's still pretty pliable, but it's uh, a little bit thicker now. It's more structured, excuse me, not thicker. Speaking of thickness, I didn't tell you this is pre-rolled on a pasta machine. Um, I brought it down to a number two because it is just the inset. So we don't need it to be very thick. And we wouldn't want it to be. So I'm going to go in here and take out the fish part. I'm going to clean up my edges and make sure that I got everything. This particular piece needs to be Exact. So I'll clean up my edges. I see that there's a little piece here that I don't really like. Okay. This little piece has uh, caused us quite a stir in the family. When I came up with the design, I did not realize how hard it was going to be to actually make it fit correctly. And every time we did it, I had to kind of play with it and fudge it around a little bit to get it to fit exactly how I wanted. I think we have it correct now. And if you like a different design or find a different inset, that would be perfectly fine. So let me just clean up these edges. As I've said before, neatness and the more care that you give your shoe, the better your shoe's going to look.
The other thing I'm going to tell you to do is breathe. Just like a shoe in real life is sometimes not going to be completely perfect. Your shoe isn't always going to be completely perfect. It would look like I made too deep of a cut there. I'm going to go back in and fix it because it's not fitting. And there we have it. So now I'm gonna now that I know that everything fits, I will go ahead and glue it down with a little bit of um, sugar glue. And you don't need a lot because fondant generally will stick to fondant. You just don't want it coming up. And these templates are made to fit in exactly perfectly from the sole to the large sole to the inset. The measurements have been made specifically to fit exact, so you don't have to worry about any of that if you download them. I did take a pounce wheel and add a little bit of stitching. Red gets everywhere, so I'm going to wipe my hands before I go and grab my clean piece. Go back in with it. I turned upside down and got confused. I make sure I have the right piece. Or right side, excuse me. Now normally when I'm making my shoes Repositioning the inset is not a big deal, but because red bleeds, you once you put it on, that's where it is. So you're going to have to like it in that place where everything will be red. Hi, welcome back. We're going to do the front. I decided to do a closed toe and the back of our shoe, and my objective is to bring them together. So it'll almost be, it's going to be one um, full shoe or one full side. Uh, I also took uh, red, I ran it through the pasta machine onto a number two, took the cream, ran it through a pasta machine on number two, and then went ahead and ran them both together on a number one to bring down to the thickness that I wanted to make it stand up. Since both pieces fit, I'm going to take advantage of that and cut both pieces out, but we'll only do one at a time after I cut them out. So I think that I'm going to use the exacto blade for this because I've got such a tight fit going on. This will be the top part of our shoe or the toe piece. And I put quite a bit of Tylos in here because I want it to stand up, but we're also going to use the aid of some fun foam and I have some, uh, believe it or not, I used to make dolls, so I have some doll making material, but I used to sew miniature dolls. I haven't done it in years. But I have all this neat doll foam for the filling, so we're going to take advantage of using that too, just to hold the pieces up.
I'm excited to be doing this video for you. Um, I've had, like I said, so many requests since I came out with the uh, Purple Passion Fondant Heel and have been putting off doing a video not because I didn't want to teach a video, just because I didn't know if uh, I'd be a little bit too shy. And I'm sure that my husband and daughter are just laughing because I'm not a shy person. But I must admit, being on camera and talking can be a little bit daunting. But I think we're making it through. We've been a pretty good audience. I hope I... Uh, at least meet your expectations. Okay, so that's our toe piece. I'm going to put him off to the side. The one with the leftover pieces that I will have from this particular project, I will just put together and end up with a very light red or a tulip color red, and I can use that for another project. You don't have to throw that away. You do have to remember, however, that you do you have a lot of tie lifts in there. So whatever project you decide to do, if it's not another shoe, you're going to want it to be something that you need very, very stiff bond on. Maybe you're going to want to make a bow. Or something like that. But definitely do not get rid of your excess fondant. You can also add, if you end up, uh, it gets a little bit hard on you, even though you store it. And I use a, by the way, when I store it, I use those green seal bags that I think are, I think they're for produce. They work pretty well at keeping the fondant um, nice and soft. They were great on gum paste, especially after you've colored your gum paste and it gets really hard after a couple of days. Those bags save my gum paste every time. So they're worth making an investment in. They're reusable. I think I can usually get like four uses out of them before I uh, have to get rid of them. All right, so that's my back piece. I'm just going to kind of clean up those edges a little bit. All right, we're going to put the back on first. And I like to put my back directly where my heel starts. So right about here is where we're going to put it on. I'm not sure I saw, no. I saw some ripping. All right. So we want the cream to be in the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and this time gum paste the shoe. Or I'm gum paste, I'm sorry. I'm going to sugar glue the shoe rather than the piece of uh, fondant. I absolutely adore a classic red heel. I have a couple pairs. I have two, uh, I have a peep toe, an open toe, and then a closed toe. They spruce up anything. You have your basic black dress that goes with it, your brown dress that goes with it. It's just a great heel to have. It also is a great shoe to make for somebody and put on a cake. And I want these to come down as pretty far. I will tell you your back is a little bit easier than your front. Okay, 
I decided to change my mind. I know you saw me cutting out um, just a standard round toe. And then it dawned on me. Halloween! So I'm making a little bat toe top. For a fun little shoe. So we'll have a classic red shoe for Halloween. You might not have a cool bat car, but I have a cool bat shoe. As my husband's over there video and going, I better have the car. So, I must tell you that it is uh, almost 2 in the morning here. And the reason that it's so late is because we live in Denver, and I'm sure you guys have heard the weather reports. It hailed so bad here for hours this afternoon and early evening. We couldn't even video. There'd be no way that you'd be able to hear me. So I wanted to finish this project that we started. And my husband was nice enough to stay up with me and video. And no, we can't sleep in tomorrow. I actually am doing a demonstration of a shoe for Isis at Kate Crafters on Broadway tomorrow. Just make sure every little piece. And this particular template is available on Bobby Shop. So you can make your own bat shoe. And just go in and cut up these edges. Okay, so we're going to put our toe piece on, our fun little bat toe piece. I have a piece of foam in here to hold it up. I might need a little more foam, but I wanted to get this on where the sugar is before I added more because I didn't want to stick to the sugar. Well, we've got the toe top on. And I have a piece of fun foam holding this up and some, like I said, doll filler in here. It's just this little foam. Actually, to tell you the truth, um, I used to know someone at Build the Bear and they gave me a ton of it a few years back. So that's there. So we've got that all ready. And now we can decorate the shoe once it's dry. 